My name is Zeke O'Connor. I'm the founder of the Sir Edmund Hillary Foundation and a former NFL and CFL football player. Of course, I uh, got a scholarship, actually a football scholarship to the University of Notre Dame in South Bend, Indiana, uh, a four-year scholarship. I uh, started there and started as a starting end when I was 18 years old, which was quite an accomplishment for me. Then I went into the service for two years in the United States Navy, came out, went back to Notre Dame. I didn't play as much uh, when I went back. I got hurt and a few things, but I did get drafted, uh, both from the National Football League and the All-American Conference, which led me into a career with Buffalo, Cleveland, and then with the New York Yanks in New York, where I was home. And uh, from there, I came up to uh, Toronto to play with the Toronto Argonauts. And fortunate enough, <coughs> excuse me, fortunate enough, uh, I was played in the 1952 Grey Cup, which we won. It was a really uh, wonderful uh, play call by uh, Nick Volpe, who was up in the press box. Narby Wachowski faded back, Al Bruno went one way and two men went with him and they left me alone and I came out in the open. So Narby Wachowski threw the pass to me. I stumbled a bit, but I caught it and then I raced in 15 or 20 yards into the end zone. But on the way in, when I was stumbling, I did see an exit. And I thought, boy, I dropped this one and I'm going right out the exit and going home. But l luckily for me, it, it, I did catch it, and it led to an awful lot of uh, wonderful things on down the line. And one of them was and is the Sir Edmund Hillary Foundation. Yes, I did. Uh, originally, I, w I started out as a buyer and then moved on through the ranks. I was at one time in charge of women's fashions, actually, in Montreal for the company, came back to sporting goods, and Sir Edmund was an advisor for Sears Roebuck in the United States, and I was in charge of sporting goods here. So it uh, led to a mutual friend inviting us to La Vendrie Park in Quebec to go on a fishing trip and an equipment to testing trip. And we went on it, and during the evening we had cocktails, and they were serving bourbon, and neither Sir Ed or myself liked uh, bourbon, so he had a cocktail mixer that cut it. And from drinking at the cocktail hours, we struck up a friendship, which led from one thing to another, to a, a cocktail party in Chicago, a business cocktail party. He invited me to go to Nepal with him, and I at first said no, but my boss said yes, so I went, and that was the start of my association. A year later, uh, when I went back to the, to the Orient, and back to the, another trip, I did, with Sir Edmund, create the Sir Edmund Hillary Foundation of Canada, and uh, it's gone on now for 40, over 40 years. board and became the executive director and CEO. I run it on a daily basis from the Sears offices downtown in the Eaton Center, actually. But uh, I wanted to clarify that. And Sir Ed was on the board as the executive vice president until his death in 2008. But during that time, we established what we wanted to do and how we could help his total effort in the Solu Kumbu area or the Mount Everest area of Nepal. And that was in three areas, in uh, the environment, in education, and most of all in healthcare. We have funded the Kundi Hospital, which is the highest hospital in the world, at 13,700 feet for the last 40 years. In fact, this is the 40th anniversary of us funded and the 50th anniversary of the, of the hospital having been built by Sir Edmund and his friends. There was no schools at all when he started. He built the first school. He had built about 10 of them when we came along. And with him, we finished up with 29 schools, which was two high schools and two airfields 
and a whole bunch of other water pipelines and things like that. We have educated eight young men and women in the area to become medical doctors. Went to the university in Kathmandu. One of them who was a paramedic, a Sherpa who was a paramedic for 19 years, a Kami Temba Sherpa, Dr. Kami Temba Sherpa, is now the head of medicine. After 19 years, we, we scholarshiped him to a university. He got his education, became a medical doctor, and in 2000, 2003, he took over the hospital and he has been running it since. We also have another major project going on which has just started in 2010 and that is a high school from grade 10 through, uh, to no grade 8 through to 12 where they're teaching science for the first time in a high school in the mountains. These children are now able to go to university from there to become doctors or lawyers. Before they had to go to Kathmandu, which meant taking them away from their families. Earlier that uh, we have planted almost four million, between four and million trees in the Solo Kumbu area, which once was looking gray from rock and now is looking green from trees. It's just been a wonderful venture. I, uh, uh, as far as that goes, and money well spent in sending these to the university, and they came back to their local communities and are satisfied very much with helping their own. Yeah. Well, one of the, one of the things that, that the Serban Hillary Foundation and all of my uh, the football, the Argonaut football, and all have led to privileges of meeting very important people and getting to know some of them very well, like Sir Edmund who became such a close friend. But in actuality, the most recent one that really stunned me was when Sir jo Lord John Hunt's daughter, who I knew from the climb of Everest, asked me if I would do her a favor when I was in London. And I said, so what, what was that? And she said, would you mind introducing the queen to your daughter and a few other people? I said, the queen of what? And she said, of England. I said, would I be thrilled? Here, a kid from the Bronx got to meet the queen and when I met her, I had a little incident and I said, Your Majesty, I'm Zeke O'Connor from the Sir Edmund Hillary Foundation. And she said, Zeke, isn't that a cute name? <laughs> Through the National Football League, uh, I got to meet uh, Muhammad Ali and spend some time with him twice down at his home in Bering Springs, Michigan. And, uh, and of course, I was so fortunate to meet the Dalai Lama, and I met him right here in Toronto at a, at a, a luncheon, and when he was introduced to me, he, uh, I gave him a cotter, which is a, 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 ro uh, a sort of a scarf you put on in honor. He asked me where I got it, and I told him from the Rinpoche, which is a reincarnated Lama of Tangbochi, and he said, oh my goodness, you must take this, not give it away. Now you have it from both he and the Dalai Lama. Then through the interpreter, he asked me if he could have an audience with me for after the thing. And I spent a half hour with him talking about a nunnery and all of the different things that the Buddhists were doing up in our area and I happened to know something about. And that was quite an honor. And then of course, there are also people like Neil Armstrong, who was the uh, first man to get on the moon. I met him with Sir Edmund and Peter Hillary when they were on their way to the North Pole, I was introduced to Neil, and he was more interested in the fact that I had played for the Cleveland Browns and he wasn't telling me about what it was like on the moon. And I met Jack Nicholas through Sears and through my job as a, in charge of uh, sport. And Johnny Miller was part of our sports advisory council in promoting Sears and its sporting goods. And Walter Conkright was another one who signed up for the uh, thing. So there were a lot of other people like that I don't count meeting somebody by shaking hands, uh, but I do uh, count it if I shake hands and have a chance to talk to them, I have a conversation, or be with them for a half hour or so. But it's really been exciting to me, uh, not because of uh, who they are, but what they are in, in most cases and what they're doing to help us help the Sherpas of Nepal. But how fortunate I am to be able to be 90 years old and continuing. I want to thank all the people across the country that have helped us and those that will help us for making us what we are. 
When I know I'm going to uh, write a book about it and I'm going to sell it, I'm not telling you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you know the story about the Yeti, but the Yeti uh, uh, story is being told all through the Himalayas, and I had heard it for, you know, 10 or 15 years, and I decided I would maybe write a book about it. But I, I, I looked and there were 350 books written about the Yeti. So I, I decided to have an artist draw what I thought the Yeti would be. And this is it. We had it made and through Sears and the Sears Christmas catalogs, we sold 353,000 of these. And we gave a dollar from each one to the Boys and Girls Clubs of Canada, Special Olympics Canada, and the Sir Edmund Hillary Foundation. So this guy, the Yeti, has really been, and oh, just I guess about five or six years ago, the board of directors decided that the Yeti should be the Sir Evan Hillary Foundation mascot. And he is now, and he's helping us tremendously. We do still sell him uh, through, from our website, and any kind of a book signing we have, we have them out, and sometimes I must admit that the people want to get the Yeti more than they want to get the book. <laughs>